maybe just a single two or even if you're radical, a three-level system that resides inside of a single mode optical cavity, it's quantum electrodynamics. Quantum electrodynamics is a complicated theory, of course. I don't know what it is. But um, this is quantum electrodynamics that is just uh, boiled down and simplified to sort of its most basic elements. And it's just a really simple construction in which to understand how uh, electrical, uh, electrically charged objects and matter interact with uh, electromagnetic fields. Um, by boiling it down to just a single two-level atom and just a single mode field, maybe also admitting that that single mode field is connected to maybe a one-dimensional waveguide on the outside, you allow yourself to study uh, quantum field theory, but at an extremely detailed level, right? At a way that quantum field theorists would sort of never look at in the, the level of precision or, or detail that we can't examine this quantum field theory. So it's very rich in that regard. But I came to this field from having studied uh, quantum gases and uh, quantum field theory in a more many-body setting. So when uh, one could start dreaming about constructions of cavity QED that were much more fanciful, uh, it seemed to me that there was now a, a possibility of combining my favorite interests all in one and trying to, if you will, extend uh, to some degree our detailed view of quantum field theory to much more uh, rich systems, um, many particle systems, maybe also continuous systems, and all sorts of fancy new topologies. Um, and in addition, it seemed like there were coming on the market um, several experimental systems that all could now, not just as a pipe dream, but actually as a real possibility, um, realize some of these uh, types of geometries, these ways of linking up the simple element of cavity QED into a much more, um, much more rich uh, system. So we wanted to pull together um, the people who think hard about this topic and who are making all the experimental progress that is opening this up to be uh, explored and get everybody to try to, I, to some degree, summarize what you're doing, but I would much rather have you consider uh, dreaming forward. So what I want to encourage everybody to do is to let their imagination run and Let's see if collectively, with all the people in this room, we can sort of define some vision. Obviously, none of us have to exactly pursue it. For what this field sh should do, what is the most ambitious scientific use of what it is we're producing and starting to think about? Um, so I'll point out that the talks are by and large scheduled for 45-minute uh, chunks. I would appreciate if the speakers, first of all, um, uh, spend some time talking about a vision and a future and offering up grand challenges for people to either embrace or bash, um, and do so all within about 35 minutes. And then we have maybe 10 minutes for discussion. And let's, let me challenge everybody to open up their mouth and say something interesting once, at least, during the <laughs> workshop, maybe even this morning. And I think we'll see that the ideas really flow. Um, to the extent that the ideas flow, let's capture them. So. I've set up a Google Sheets uh, a spreadsheet, and uh, there's the link. <laughs> but um, the link is also being emailed to you. So uh, you should all be able to uh, edit it directly. And I would say when you think of something that you want to offer to the crowd as like a grand challenge, something where there's truly new science that you feel that we could potentially open up with the kind of things we're considering, let's throw it on this list. and and let's put it together as sort of a visioning document. And after the workshop is done, uh, may I and maybe also the other organizers, anybody else who wants to participate, we can draw this up into some kind of document. We can send it around for people to consider. We can grab uh, research money by doing so. Anyhow, it could be a very uh, productive activity. <laughs> the second uh, story for how this uh, workshop came about is that um, maybe a year, year and a half, two years ago, I just, I don't know, I maybe was just chit-chatting with Hussein at the, um, at the Damop conference, maybe over coffee, and I said something. Uh, something, I don't know, many body physics, cavity QED. Anyhow, so the job of the uh, ITAMP director is to latch onto these possibilities and turn them into workshops. So Hussein was, um, was a driving force in making this happen. I mean, he didn't have to drive that hard, but definitely when you say, look, I have this, organization and this facility that will run these meetings, you just have to sort of help me um, develop this idea and invite people. Uh, it's very uh, tempting to just go ahead and do it. So thank you uh, again to both of you for your persistence in making this happen and making it happen uh, rather easily and painlessly. 
So um, that's all I wanted to say, which I guess leaves us even five minutes um, early. And maybe I'll have the first speaker come speak.